Are you a radio ham trying to make contact via the FM satellites without much success? Well, stay tuned. I'll see if I can help. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie with me, Keith. Working FM satellites can be quite exciting for the radio ham, especially if you make contact over vast distances. And recently I produced a video that looked at the repeater system that's now on board the International Space Station. I'll leave a link in the description below. In the video, it gave details on the uplink and downlink frequencies, the channel settings for your radio, and also some best practice for antennas. But what it didn't discuss was the best practice for using your radio to get into the repeater. So let's address that now. The thing to remember about satellites are that the coverage area or footprint can be vast. They can cover whole countries and in some cases even continents. And for that reason, the number of radio hams trying to communicate via that one single satellite on its pass overhead can go from tens to hundreds. And for that reason, you need to be able to make sure that your signal isn't conflicting with other stations and for that reason you need to be able to receive your signal being transmitted simultaneously as you transmit. For this reason split mode operation on a single radio is not really encouraged because you are unable to hear your own signal as you transmit therefore you are unable to know if you're getting into the repeater or if you're transmitting over the top of someone else. Best practice is to use either a radio with simultaneous receive and transmit, or two radios, one on receive and one on transmit. When it comes to frequencies, the best source of frequency information is via AMSAT, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Not only will it give you the frequencies for transmit and receive, but it will also give you information such as the CTCSS tone. Now some satellites require the use of a single CTCSS tone to activate the repeater on board the satellite. Once it's activated it will stay latched for somewhere in the region of about 10 minutes but this depends on the individual satellite. At the same time once it's activated it then requires another tone to be used during the pass to enable it to be kept open and these details will be listed on the AMSAT site. On UHF either downlink or uplink we need to take into account what's known as the Doppler effect or Doppler shift. So what does this mean? Well as the satellite moves towards you if it has a UHF uplink in other words you transmit on UHF you need to tune your transmitter up. And the reason we do this is because the satellite is unable to retune its receiver. Conversely, if a satellite is coming towards you and it's got a UHF downlink, in other words, you'll be receiving the signal in UHF, then you need to shift your receive frequency down. And as we can see in this example, the satellite shown, SO50, has a UHF downlink and you need to shift down your receive frequency. And again, AO91 and 92 have a 435 megahertz uplink, and therefore you need to shift your frequency up. Remember, we don't need to do this with VHF signals, as there is a minimal amount of shift. There are a number of pieces of software available that will help you track the Doppler shift of satellites, and one that I use is the tracking software called Orbitron. Now Orbitron is a free download that you can get off the internet and upload to your own PC or Mac. Once installed you can select as many satellites that you wish to receive including the International Space Station. As you can see in this demonstration of Orbitron you're able to click on each of the satellites you select it will give you a prediction of uh, when they're going to be over you next their uplink and downlink frequencies, along with the size of the footprint. So I hope you see that working FM satellites isn't that hard if you do it correctly. 
and that involves knowing how to set up your radios and understanding the Doppler shift. I hope you found this video enjoyable and entertaining. If you have, consider giving me a thumbs up. It lets me know that I'm doing something right. Even subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every time I put new information up. So, my name's Keith, my call sign is G0FEA, and I'm the Ham Radio Junkie. I'll catch you next time.